some point in my in my career, right? Like um, a lot of people kept making me feel like I was the like I was the only one in my in my space that was doing as good as like the Afro pop artist, right? Um, of course, I had like Afro pop hits and. Almost every rapper in, in Nigeria who is A-list, always established, will have an Afro pop hit at least. But he, he, you can't make it a thing because Afro pop is not rap. It's different from rap. You know what I mean? So along the line, there was no culture. There was no hip hop culture in Africa or in Nigeria. And at the same time, I'm a kid that I was influenced by. Lil Wayne, Jay Z, you know, I was listening to them, Fadjo growing up, and all these guys, Snoop Dogg and Coolio, and all this. Like, I'm literally the rap guy there growing up and then getting into TI and eventually um, Nicki Minaj, Drake, you know what I mean? That's what I grew up listening to, regardless of the fact that I'm a Nigerian kid, right? But then after I had my first, um, um, uh, I did this cover to a record. It was the biggest record in the country. And I did like a rap cover to the record. And it got me into the limelight. That was how I got my first deal in Nigeria with a Nigerian record label. And my first single was with Whiskey and it was a hit record. So a few months after I released my first ever mixtape record that was a cover of a record, I became a star, right? Now, the, the way it happens in Nigeria is you get famous for your talent, but you're not really making anything out of it because rap music is not the number one genre in the country or in the continent. But they love rap music when it comes for drip from Drake and when it comes from Lil Wayne because they identify Lil Wayne as a rapper and they assume that because the culture of rap is from America and from the Western culture, that's what Lil Wayne is supposed to be doing. But you as a Nigerian rapper, when you start doing stuff like that, they feel like, you're making like sounds from a bird culture, right? So I wasn't even conscious about all these things, you know, but this was a problem in the industry that I was. I wasn't conscious about all these things. I was just doing my thing, you know, doing what I knew how to do best, make records and all that stuff and all that stuff. So as I was going through this phase, I learned something. And when I started my own stuff, I started popping again in Nigeria. And a lot of people kept like, it kept coming to me like, yo, like what's going on? Like how come? How you? Are you being able to you know keep up with like this David was this whiskey and this you go into the arena and hundred percent of the people there are singing the David O record and the whiskey record and I come on stage and seventy percent of the crowd is still singing my rap records. People didn't understand like how come you could make like rap music that Nigerians would know and sing with you like they didn't understand that shit so. I kept going back to listening to my to listening to myself and I realized that my music was different from even what David Doe, Whiskey and everybody was doing in its own way. Even when we made records together, you could tell when I when I come in that there's a different like there's a different like uh, slang and twang to the way I did my shit. You know what I mean? So I realized that at that point I could actually like create a blueprint for other people and other rappers and trap stars who believe in this rap music and this stuff to believe that they can make it as big as I was doing it because I was in I was in the process so I wasn't even seeing what it was I was doing like I literally woke up one day and saw I had two million followers on Instagram I wasn't checking all that stuff I was just recording you know you're going from this show to the next show you're just posting your pictures and you're going back to the studio or it's a party or it's an event like. I was just in the process of doing what I had to do to survive. You know what I mean? And then all that stuff happened and I realized that my the culture I was influenced by, which was hip hop, is now trap music. That's the evolution of hip hop, right? And the culture where I grew up is Afrobeat music. So now I created this sound that's a fusion of my influences and my culture. And that's the trap flow sound. So it creates a balance and it creates the freedom and it also gives, you know, people the the the, the opportunity to call it their own. So Africans can tell me that I'm making a bold cultural music. No. Americans can't tell me I'm making bold cultural music. No. 
I'm making trap flow music, which is which which is a fusion of my influence, my the environment and the music. So that's how I came up with you know trap flow and. Um, I spoke to, I, I called, I, at a point in time when I was trying to get the message across, I'm still trying to get the message across because a lot of people don't understand it. And then I, I was on the phone with um, Fela's manager before I put out the album. I don't know if you ever heard of Fela. He's one of the greatest artists ever. You know, he, he's the innovator of Afro beats. And he started telling me the stories about how they created Afro beats. And they actually, Fela actually came up with the name when he was in America. And it came from the word Afro, the hairstyle of, of black people, you know. And then we had a lot of conversations. He told me about how people didn't understand him because he's going out there making a song where in, in a time where jazz music was the number one, you know, sound and all that stuff. And then there was soul and all that. He was just telling me about the different challenges that were going through. People were confused when they would come on stage because they didn't know how to, you know, how to move to the music. or But they could hear what he was saying at some point. You know, so I'm like, okay, you know what? This is not going to be a walk in the park. You know, I'm, I, Fela definitely went through some of all these things I'm going through. But if you didn't do all those things, there won't be Afro beats today in the world and there won't be trap flow today in the world. You know what I mean? So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to create a path for other trap stars in Nigeria and in Africa to be successful and at the same time i'm gonna make a sound that the whole world could listen to like what drake did in one dance if drake was young six he would be making more records like one dance you get what i you get what i mean that's the that's that trap through sound you know what i mean i've heard a lot of american artists try to make afro beat records too but i would say they're not getting it right but if if they listen to trap through they would easily find a way in which the style will suit them effortlessly because Trafro is already a fusion of the Western sound and the Afrobeat sound that they really want a piece of right now. So, you know, that was it. That's how I came up with Trafro.